Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the RK84 that was sent over to me by Royal Clothes themselves for my honest review. The first thing I wanted to talk about is what this keyboard really is. It is an 80% keyboard. That means it has the FN row, but it has a compressed layout instead of your typical TKL layout. Everything is more squished together and some people may like that and some people may not. It is available in white or black and comes in three different switch options, red, blues, and browns. It can be found on Amazon for around $90, but at the time of the recording this video, there is $10 off. So price does vary, but overall it is still a very good budget option if you're in the market for a budget keyboard. The unboxing experience for this keyboard is quite simple. Inside the box, you have the keyboard, the USB-C wire, the keycap puller with switch puller on the other side, and you also have some extra switches. The cool thing about this keyboard is that it has Bluetooth and 2.4 Hertz and a wired connectivity. So you have three different connectivity options for you to choose from depending on what situation you're in. I like this keyboard a lot because it gives the user a lot of options to choose from. Not only do you have the three connectivity options, but you also have the option to choose whether or not you want it to be a low profile keyboard or a high profile keyboard. What I mean by that is you can take off the top cover very, very easily to expose the sides of the switches to make the keyboard more of a low profile. And you know, some people may like the style of a low profile better, but I prefer the high profile. So that is exactly what I'm choosing. I've been talking about some of the things I liked about this keyboard, but I wanted to focus on the cons. In this keyboard, we have a steel plate with no PCB foam and no case foam at all whatsoever. This is a ping machine. Once you get it, you have to stuff this thing filled with cotton, foam, whatever you want to do. You just have to stuff it filled with layers of foam because the ping is crazy on this keyboard. So if you buy it stock and you want to use it stock, just know that the stabilizers will be rattly and there will be a lot of ping in this keyboard. The stabilizers are just your typical plate mounted stabilizers, but I actually wanted to try out some Duroc plate mounted stabilizers but the difference with these plate mounted stabilizers is that I got them from lubeswitches.com. They are a new website that has been coming around where they lube switches of course but they also offer lube stabilizers. Now this package did take two weeks to get to me and I'm going to assume that's because of the Christmas break and all of that so maybe it won't be as long for you guys but I'm actually quite happy with how they came out you know they are well tuned and they are looped pretty well they can also include a syringe for you if you do want to add more loop to it and basically tune the stabilizers to what you would want overall the stabilizers i bought extra from loop switches are very very nice and i do recommend them if you're lazy like me and don't want to go through the hassle of looping stabilizers now i did promise my previous video that whatever switch I got out of the Novel Keys Mystery Switch package is the switch I'll be using in this keyboard and that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. So spoiler alert if you haven't seen that video I actually got Novel Keys Sherbert switches which are a clicky switch and they are pretty light as well. I don't want to say too much because I have a switch review video on these switches coming soon but overall they're a higher pitch clickier switch with some ping to them and some scratchiness as well. I'll be leaving a sound test here so you guys can hear how they sound. The software of this keyboard is okay at best, you know, it's nothing crazy, but depending on which keyboard you have, you have to install a certain software. So the way to find this out is you go to the back of your keyboard and it has some numbers. If the first digits are 20, you would install the software that has 20 in the name, but if the first digits are 21, 
on your keyboard, then you want to install the 21 software. So it's a little confusing. I don't really know why this is, but it's just something I wanted to point out just in case. The last thing I wanted to show you guys is basically all the RGB modes that they have to offer. If you don't really care about seeing the RGB modes, all you have to do is skip ahead using the timestamps I have provided. Overall, I really like this keyboard for what it is, but I do think there are probably better options on the market for you to choose from. But if you did want something that is very versatile because it has three different connection modes and it can be a high profile or low profile board depending on what you choose, then this keyboard is definitely up your alley and I do recommend you checking it out. I'll be leaving a link to this keyboard in the description below. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.